Hello everyone. Happy Sunday morning um, where I am. I'm over in South Carolina so it's 10 a.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. So I just wanted to uh, welcome everyone. Uh, if you're new to the mystery quilt and you are looking for any information right there in the announcements, you can find a link to the Morewood Mystery page and that contains all the information um, about and all the links to all of the uh, the instructions, but um, I actually haven't added the instruction the link to the cutting instructions yet So I'll do that as soon as we get off. Um, I forgot to do that this morning. So I hope everyone um, has seen the blog post has the instructions um, and um, Is ready to go if you have any trouble with the pattern um, downloading it or anything Send me an email, mmdmysteryquilts at gmail.com. That's mmdmysteryquilts at gmail.com. And I can send you the file directly, or I can help in any other way. So um, so that's that. Uh, we have some good mornings and some good nights. It's midnight from Sydney, so thank you, Lynn, for um, staying up so well, so long. All of this will be recorded, so if you want to go back um, and review it, or or you're missing it, or you have to cut out for some reason, it'll all be available. Um, I just have to press a button after we we finish, and it'll be it'll be up. Um, I did. Um, I'm going to show you some of my favorite notions and tools. And so you don't have to take notes. I did put a, um, I'll put another link um, in the the group, but I have an Amazon, I don't know, it's kind of like a little page kind of thing, but I went and I made sure everything I'm going to talk about is up there. So if you are interested in anything I'm showing, you don't have to sit there taking notes. Um, everything is there on links um, in Amazon, though a lot of it's available in your local quilt shops too. So with that, um, let's get started. Um, I have my list. Here we go. Um, so now that we've seen the fabrics, I've had um, a bunch of questions about which fabric should we use for fabrics A, B, C, and D. And the really the one of the nice things about this pattern is that all four of them use the same amount of yardage and none of them touch each other. So you don't have to worry if there's enough contrast between A and B because all of them, as long as they have good contrast against the background, they'll look good. So I would say, you know, if you really, really would like to figure it out, um, there is a sneak peek available and there's even a coloring page in the sneak peek and you can kind of color and you can figure it out. I have played around and really, I don't really think that there's any bad combination. There's nothing that I would say like, oh, the dark should be this letter or the light should be or anything like that. I think you really have a lot of freedom there. I will say um, one of the fabrics, most of the, um, the pieces are cut at six inches and I think that's B. Don't, don't quote me on that. And I think fabric A, I think you're cutting it into three and three and a half inch. So if you were using a slightly larger scale print or one of your, you know, your more favorite prints that you didn't want to cut as small, I would use it maybe for fabric B or fabric C and D are also like five and five and a half inches also. So they're not too small. So, you know, um, I would just kind of lay it out and see what the pieces size cuts are and, uh, and go from there. So that is my suggestions for fabric, um, my fabric cutting. So I'm now gonna go and reposition ourselves. And I did clean my sewing room enough so that I could actually show you my cutting table. Um, and one of these days I'll do a little, um, I'll do a little thing and show you my sewing room, which is really pretty small. Um, and let me just see if I can, how can I not switch the camera around? Oh, there we go. Here we are. Oh, so this is my cutting table. I'll back up so you can see it. It's our old kitchen table. So it's just a regular table. Um, it's probably not the most ergonomic. I have my um, my sewing machine sitting on top of it. So it is a little, little high. The really the nice thing is, is that I have three sides I can cut from. So, you know, the most important thing about cutting is doing it safely and having multiple sides you can work from makes it easier and makes it safer. So that's my cutting board that I have a little area that just stuff piles on and in the back is my cat's pillow because she, she likes to hang out with me and if I don't give her that pillow she lays all over what I'm trying to cut. So I am gonna put you right there 
And now I'll be on the other side of the camera. So I'll be bopping back and making sure you guys, if you have any questions, you know, type them in. You can see, you can see one of the cats right there. You see her? That's Piper. That's my little one. Usually as soon as I do start cutting things, they, um, they decide to come and, uh, get all over my sewing table. So the first thing I'd like to show is this is my sewing. This is my cutting mat. It is an alpha mat. I will say total disclosure. I was an alpha creator last year. Um, and so I do have a lot of alpha products that they did give me. Um, but I have used Fiskars and, um, one other brand of cutting mat. And this one is my favorite. Um, I was using an 18, by 24 inch, so about half this size. This one's, this one's, yeah, this one's a 12 by 18, a little, so a little bit larger. Um, having this larger one is so nice, um, upgrading to this. This is one of my best investments, and I, I purchased this myself. Um, so, talking about cutters next, one of the reasons I became an alpha creator, um, or applied to, was because I loved their cutter so much. And I, I mean, I could bring them over. I probably have 10 different cutter styles. And the most safe cutter will be the one that feels the best in your hand and is the most ergonomic for you. So this is my favorite one. It's called the Ergonomic Alpha. When you squeeze it, the blade comes out. It does have a locking feature. So um, I use this one the most. It's a 45 millimeter. If I am cutting large yardage, if I remember, I switch over to the 60 millimeter. If I'm cutting something really tiny, they have a little teeny tiny one, but honestly, um, I use this one 95% of the time. And I had, I went through probably six or seven other cutters um, before I, I found this one. And this is just, this one's just my favorite. Um, now, that being said, my son, when he does a little bit of quilting and he's 13 years old, he can't really, he, this one just doesn't feel right to him. He can't cut with this one. He likes one of the ones that are more straight, where the blade comes out and you're just doing it straight. And he can, he can cut a lot easier with that. So this is not a one size fits all. This is the one, this is the one I like. Um, and with that, public service announcement. Um, okay. So I'm just sorry. I was just checking the uh, the thing. Some people are having issues. Um, Alpha did send me these. These are endurance blades, and they're kind of ridiculously expensive. Uh, personally, I never would have tried them because they're like four times, three times as much as a normal blade. Um, and I, but they sent me one. They said, "Can you review this?" And I actually had to tell them like after two months, I was like, "I need some more time because it's just not dull." So. They are expensive and it says last twice as long. I found, I mean, I used one for like four months and it just, it still was way sharper than some of my other ones. So um, those are my favorites on the blades. But, you know, a sharp blade is just like a sharp kitchen knife is safer. So those are my favorites. And, you know, change your blade. I, I am also in the habit, I just forget. And then I'm like, oh, when did I last change that? And then I change it out and I'm just like, oh wow, this cuts so much better. So, any questions there? I'm just checking. Good morning, good morning, hello, okay. On to rulers. My favorite ruler, and I'll put it down so you can see it, is a six inch by 24 inch ruler. Um, this one is an alpha one, which has a little bit of frosting and it kind of just sticks just a little bit. Um, I have an Omni Grids. I like that one too. I have a couple other ones. I have a Fiskars, but I tend I think it tends to slide around too much. I think I have about four of them. Um, the nice thing about the Omni Grid, well, I mean the other one comes. The Omni Grid is six and a half inch. So if you're cutting six and a half inches versus six inches, you know it's just a little bit larger, and it's also twenty four and a half versus 24. So these are the two I use the most. Those are my go-to rulers. Other rulers I like, I'll admit, Alpha sent me this one and I was like, what in the world are you supposed to do with this? Um, but I love it 
with this little quarter inch mark here. I use it to trim um, when I'm doing paper piecing. And I like it better than the add a quarter ruler. And I also use this one to draw diagonal lines um, when doing half square triangles and I have to when I have to mark things. It's a really great, it's a I don't know, it just fits my hand well to do um to do uh half square triangles and to draw any lines for anything. This is my other favorite ruler. This is a six by 12. Um, and this one I use after I cut the strips with this longer one. If they are smaller, it's just it's just easier because it's it's kind of, it feels the same as the six by 24, but you know, you can just, it's just, it's just a lot smaller. So you can, um, you can cut better with that. And then I have a couple, um, a couple extra rulers. This one's a four and a half. This is a six and a half. Um, it all depends. A lot of times blocks. What's the size of the skinny ruler? Okay, these are, that's crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. You're totally right. This is, I didn't, this is creative grids. I do really like creative grids rulers. They have the, they have these little nubs you can see and they, they're really nice and grippy. Yeah, so sorry about that. That's creative grids, not omni grid. And then the question for the Ulfa, this one is, it's an, an inch and a quarter by 12 inches. Um, and that one is on my Amazon list. So if you wanted to look that up, I don't know. It's just, it's just a really handy size. And I'll admit when they, when I did get it, I was kind of, I, I kind of questioned whether I would really use it, but I found that I, I do. So I do have these, um, you know, it just winds up that a lot of things, are tip you know four and a half and or yeah four and a half and six and a half inches so having some little sizes is just helpful these are definitely not necessary as you can see the largest piece we're cutting on this whole quilt is six inches so you can cut the entire quilt with just one ruler you do not need any special rulers that being said this is my special my favorite special ruler this is a block lock um red that is shiny Oh, okay, yeah, no, um, do, 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 yes, Creative Grids also does have an eight and a half by 24 and a half inch. I don't know, that one, that one would be cool, um, it almost would maybe be too big, I don't know, um, but the Block Lock Ruler is my favorite, favorite custom ruler, and actually I've used it so much, the corner is actually not really pointy anymore. I'm thinking I might actually have to replace it after making, I've made like probably three or 4,000 blocks with this. Um, but what it is, is it's hard to see here, but there's a groove cut out and it rides right along the seam of the half square triangle. And um, it makes for just perfect half square triangles with your um, all your points in the corners. So just a little hint, there are a number of half square triangles in this quilt. Um, and so when we do do um, half square triangles, I'm going to show you some tips on how I do them that wind up keeping the seams nice and straight. And I will demo how to use the block lock ruler because um, the nice thing is they sell all different sizes, but the six and a half inch will make any half square triangle up to six and a half inches. So they sell little ones too, which um, some people like, uh, but this one does really everything that I need. And I just saw that I saw on Amazon when I was fixing up the list, they have a nine and a half inch half square triangle ruler now. And I am totally putting that on my Christmas list because I mean, that that's just awesome. So yeah, so I think I just answered the question from Mimi. With the block lock ruler, this one's a six and a half inch. You can do anything you can do one inch, you can do three inches, you can do five and a half. Anything up to six and a half you can do with this ruler, and I do love it. No, 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 that's fine, Mimi. Okay, and so my other things that I like, okay, this was, this is a bit of a splurge. This is a 16 and a half inch ruler. I never had one. I The biggest I ever had was a 12 and a half, so 16 and a half inch I don't use it often, but I do use it to trim up quilt tops once I've quilted them to trim the corners. 
And I also use it sometimes when I have larger blocks, like if your block winds up at 16 and a half, you can lay that on there and trim it up. And um, now that I have it, I kind of wonder why I waited so long. The answer is, you know, it's a lot of money for a piece of plastic, honestly, but uh, it really, I really like having it. So the last tool or notion I'm gonna show is my um, my tourney mat. So this comes in handy when you are trimming the half square triangles. You go like this, you trim two sides, you spin it around, you move the thing and you trim the other two sides. Especially when you're doing so many of them, this is super nice. I had a Fiskars one before this, which was also, it was a, the yellow color. It worked great. Um, I actually, I cut so much on it, I actually, I just wore it out. And every time I'd cut this like yellow, I don't know, just bits would come out. So this is my newer one now. Um, but I do, I do love that. And this is a real good time saver. So, um, and everyone has different, different notions. So the rulers are the same as, um, you know, as your cutter, whatever feels good to your hand is going to be the safest. And so let me just check my notes to make sure that I am getting everything okay. So how I cut. So those are my tools that I, I like to use. And so most of the time on my cutting board, those are what I'm cutting with. Let me just make sure. Yes. Okay. Um, and I actually do not use the lines on my cutting mat to cut. I did when I first started quilting, um, and I'd have a problem as I'd cut, you know, things would shift, and then I was constantly trying to ooze the fabric to have it line back up on this. Um, and someone told me to try to just use the line markings on the ruler, it will be much more accurate. And since then, that is what I've done. And I have to tell you, I find it to be more accurate. So the way I do, the way I cut fabric, look at that, here's my fabric. And you smooth it out. Okay, so you can, okay, I'm bopping behind the camera just to make sure that you can see this well. Okay, so the first thing you see is the edge. You know, this could be washed or unwashed. Um, this edge is not even. So the first thing I do is I put my ruler and notice I am not using any of the lines on the actual cutting mat and I'm aligning depending on what the fabric is you know I'm aligning it with this line this the seam right here and so this is square to the edge of the fabric and so normally I would go and stand where the um where the camera is um, so I would not, you always want to cut away from yourself. So don't do what I'm just doing right now. And so there's our little trimmings. And then, you know, you hang these off because, um, secret, there's a cat down here. Oh, no, she's sleeping. So she's not going to go and she's not going to see that. So, um, my also, my one other notion is a trash can right near my sewing table because otherwise I try to throw it across the room to get into the trash can and I make a huge mess. So now we have it all nice and cut. And so if I was to cut a two and a half inch strip, I would take this and line it up. This is the one, two, two and a half inch, these dotted lines. And I would still check down here now the smaller it is, the less lot, you know, amount, but I am making sure that my, I am perpendicular to the seam line and it should be right on that line. I'm holding my ruler down with one hand. I'm using my cutter and then I'm repositioning my hand because if I was here and I try and I'm cutting up here, there's a lot of moment and this is going to move. So after I cut, I reposition my hand, I cut again, and if you want to be really safe, then you can lock it out, or this one automatically retracts. And so here's your strip. The reason why it's important to get this perpendicular is if you were going to go, like for, 
for sashing, for binding, um, or even for some of the piecing, you want to make sure you can see that that is nice and straight. If you wind up cutting that kind of at an angle, you're going to wind up with something that looks, this is an exaggeration, you're going to wind up with a little bit of a V. Um, and then your sashing, you know, your sashing fabric isn't going to be straight. So that is how I cut, and I would continue going. Usually I'd be able to cut, if I was cutting two and a half inch strips, I'd be able to cut seven or eight. Once I got to the edge, I would pull my fabric back up. A lot of times once you pull it up and everything, you might just have to go and, and re, you know, you might have to realign it. And in which case, you know, you're only going to be taking off a millimeter or two just to make sure that edge is crisp. And then cutting again. Um, and when I do, after I cut the strips, you know, you can cut, I usually leave them folded. I'll put that on the ground, making sure you can still see. What I typically do is I go through, I look at my little salvages, I trim those off, I chuck those on the floor, no, I really, I put those in the trash can. Then I take the fat thing, spin it around, and then I cover what is gonna be cut. So if I'm cutting at two and a half, I am measuring what's under the actual um, ruler is two and a half by two and a half. So you could also cut it the other way, but this way, if I do make a mistake, the piece I'm trying to cut is protected by the ruler. So I just cut that across, and there's your two and a half inch. And if you wanted to do more, you keep going. Um, you could put two of these on here. I try not to cut more than um, about four layers, sometimes six layers, especially if I have a nice um, fresh blade. Otherwise, if you cut too thick a layer as you cut, they kind of wind up pushing and it, it doesn't wind up as accurate. You could also leave all of these strips in place and then cut, you know, all of them. And in that case, if I trim the edge, I would actually just take all of this around. See how I spin? I just spin it and then the cut edge would be over here and then I could cut. So if I am trimming a whole bunch of things, there's no reason that you can't just take your mat and just spin it the other way. So that way I'm right-handed. I'm always covering the piece to be cut and I'm cutting away from myself with my right hand. So that is how I do that. Now in the case, I'm going to get my fabric back up here. Let me just peek to make sure there's any questions. So um, the folded edge is, yes. So Debbie, the folded edge is what I'm lining my ruler up with. So this is my salvage edge. And I always line up so that my ruler is perpendicular to um, the salvage, or to the folded edge, sorry. Yeah, the cat toy idea. <laughs> like trash can is a notion. It is. And I have three of them in my sewing room and I still get stuff all over the floor. Um, so, okay. Just making sure there weren't any other questions that came in. Now say, in this case, in our pattern, Mo Morewood Mystery, you know, we're here at six inches and we can cut right at six inches. We don't need another ruler. Now if I was trying to cut an eight inch by 24 inch strip, I might have the eight inch, eight and a half by 24 inch ruler. I don't personally have one. So the way I do it, is I would go, and you see how when I, as I move things around, I'm just gonna go and trim this little tiny bit off. Um, <laughs> I totally hit the cap that time. Um, so if I wanted eight and a half, I know this is six. I take my second ruler, and so this is one, two, two and a half plus six, so two and a half plus six is eight and a half. I make sure, once again, I'm aligned on that folded edge and I can cut. So this is a way, you don't have to have a larger ruler, and, and in fact, you don't even have to have two of these large rulers. You can even, you can just use a smaller ruler, you know, and go at two and a half, and then go right there. So that is how I cut larger strips. And then once I've cut those, then I can subcut them using two rulers, or I can, I can break out a, um, 
a 12 inch ruler if I, if I need that. So those are how I cut larger pieces. And then finally, um, especially with a mystery quilt, we're gonna be cutting pieces that we're not gonna be using for a bunch of months. Um, so I use a tub or I have some trays. What I do when I'm doing a long-term project, I put all of my cut pieces in and then I put all the rest of my fabrics in because it makes you very sad that if you wind up making a mistake or you lose some of the fabric or something happens, in December, you're trying to find that fabric and you don't remember either which one it was, you can't tell which solid, or you, you know, you either put it away and lost it, you used it for another project. While I have an active project going on, I do put all of my pieces in. I will label them if they're close. Uh, the instructions are pretty, um, pretty simple in, in cases like there's nothing because sometimes you'll have a three inch piece and then a three and a quarter inch piece and you can easily get confused about those. Um, so in th that case, I would label them. But I go and I put the lid on, I put it in a safe place in my sewing room, which usually means I'll lose it because safe means out of sight and then I can't remember where I put it. Um, but that way everything is all in one piece. Um, so that is, let me, I'm just looking. I think that is all that I wanted to cover on how I do cutting. So I, I suggest, you know, I, you know, try when you're cutting it works for you. If you just cut using the ruler for all the measurements and not, not the table, it actually, I find it to be quicker and more accurate. Uh, let me know in the comments what your favorite rulers are. If you have any other tips, um, for cutting things. And let me just look back here. Do, do, do. I'm going to flip this back to my face. I'll sit over here because it's clean. Um, so, yes. Uh, yeah, a large scrap bin is very, very good. Oh, and so Lynn has a very good question. Do you have to cut everything now or can you wait? This is totally your quilt. You can wait. Um, you don't have to actually cut anything right now. You can go month to month and cut. You know, you'll see next month we're going to start piecing um, some of the subunits. And you can figure out what, you know, all the things you need. And then you can go and uh, cut those as you need them. So I prefer to cut everything. I am definitely an assembly line quilter. Um, some people like to do it a little bit at a time. If cutting is not your favorite thing, then you know, yeah, break it up. So it's, it's your quilt as long as, you know, you'll just have to cut each month as you go. So let's see. Yes, I've, I've heard of the stripology rulers that they're awesome. They're great for doing strips. I've never used one. Um, and yeah. Um, and I've tried, I guess I've really tried probably six or seven different types of rulers. And, and, um, I, my favorites are truly the alpha. So, and yeah, Quilter Select has um, some grip on the bottom. I have one of those. They're really grippy. Uh, so, and everyone's commenting with all the rulers and everything. So, excellent. So if you have any questions going forward, um, post them to the Facebook group, email me at mmdmysteryquilts at gmail.com, mmdmysteryquilts at gmail.com, and I can help with anything. I can help with files. Um, if you have any other questions about fabrics, um, and you know, have fun cutting. It really, it isn't too bad. I mean, the, the background has a, a number of pieces, but all the rest are, um, pretty decent. So I want to thank you for joining me. Um, this recording will be, um, will be in the group right after this. And I do have my Amazon, um, listy thing. Just if you're, you did like something or you wanted more information about it, you can that. Um, and, and find out more if you, uh, if you couldn't really see it. So I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much.